What's up kids? Welcome back to another episode of Zero Designs. So today, this video is going to run alongside last week's video of the 4x4, 2x4s glued together scrap wood projects. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a couple of them uh, three tier candle holders. So let's get to work. Alright guys, so your first step is going to be to take your 4x4 and you're going to measure the lengths that you want your tiered candles to be. So for this, I am going to go one at six, one at five, and one at four inches. Make your straight lines. All right, now that we got those measured and straight lined, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them out real quick, and then we're gonna go back to the work table. All right guys, so now that we got three chunks of wood at different sizes, what we need to do is we need to clean them up a little bit and then we need to get some candle sizes and see how big the holes on top need to be. So we're gonna go to the sander, we're gonna clean all this up and then we're going to measure some candles, all right? All right guys, so now that they are sanded enough, um, we are going to drill a hole in the top. The candles that I got were the, the little round tea light candles. I got them at the Dollar Tree. It was like a pack of 12 for a buck. Um, they are just under an inch and a half. I have an inch and a half paddle bit, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill the inch and a half hole on top, and then we're going to seat them in there, and once they get sat to the point where they fit well. We are going to finish these some way, probably fire, honestly, more likely fire. And then uh, that'll be it, guys. I mean, it's a super simple project, but they're gonna look great when I take them inside and give them to the wife. So let's head over to the drill press. All right, guys, here we are at the drill press. I got my paddle bit in, and what I did I don't know how well you can see. I have put some tape to where I need to stop. That way I don't seat the tea light candles too far down. So we're going to get rocking on this. And I'll see you back at the table in a minute. So now that the holes are drilled, I took the candle, it fits into all three of them very nicely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean up these holes just a little bit. That's why I said don't worry too much about the sanding because we have to go back and sand again. And then I decided we are actually going to take these outside and burn them. So we're going to get to doing that and get this project wrapped up. So back to the work table for some more sanding. All right, guys, now that the holes are drilled in the top, the candle fits in very well all the way across. We're going to take them outside. We're going to burn them. I am not going to do the shushugi bond like I did with the succulent garden. Um, I'm just going to give these ones a, like a, a regular, like you see most of the time, burn. And I have some, um, some dye, wood dye, that I want to try out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to burn these, and then we're going to dye them. So... Let's get outside and let's play with some fire. All 
right, guys, so I've given them some time to cool off. They turned out exactly how I was hoping. You know, not too burnt, but burnt enough. So, I was at Hobby Lobby the other day, and they had these color wash tints. I've never tried them before. I figured this would be a good project just to try them out on. So, seems pretty simple. I read the instructions. Just, uh... Brush on, no wipe off. So that is what we are going to do. All right, so I just poured a little bit in this container here. And what we're going to do is we are just going to uh, brush it on exactly like it said. Okay guys, so I've let the dye sit for a little bit and I'm super blown away with how cool that looks. Um, I'm going to risk it and I'm actually going to put a second coat on because if you can see the color difference over here and kind of down in the bottom over here where it kind of ran down a little more, it's a lot darker. So I'm going to try to get some of these light spots darken up a little bit. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more of the dye to the faces that are going to be what I display, because these are for me. I know the giant brush is a little overkill, but if you watched the succulent garden video, I had not run to the store to get foam brushes. And it is a week later and I still have not gone to the store. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but I love it. I think those look fantastic. And uh, again, I'll show you guys this bottle up close. It is color wash tint. They had it at Hobby Lobby. They're $2.99. And I used like only that much. So, all right, right down there. So I still got plenty to do more projects with. So we're going to let this dry for a while and... We will come back out and talk about finish and discuss the, the build together. All right, guys. So I gave the, um, the dye some time to dry, and I just went ahead. Uh, you guys don't need to see how to spray polyurethane on. So I gave them all a quick blast of polyurethane. Um, probably going to add another coat or two, but figured it was good enough right now just to wrap it up. So these were really fun. I really enjoyed doing them. They turned out beautiful. Um, I have a hard time getting it, the just how cool they look on camera. So I will include a done photo at the end of the video. Um, <clears throat> these were these are great, guys. I mean, these took maybe an hour. I just, you can do it with some scrap four x four, some scrap two x fours, like I did, or anything, you know, and. Like I said, this uh, color wash tint, it's the mimosa. Um, three bucks at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can get it online too. I'm sure they're all about the same. But I mean, they turned out, they turned out pretty nice. I, I like it a lot. So, um, <clears throat> this will end the, I'm sorry, it's raining. There's nothing I can do about it, but um, this will conclude the scrap wood cheap projects for, for now. I think I'm going to come back down this avenue later on and uh, we'll explore further into what can be made out of scrap wood. There's tons of options and what I like about it is you throw these out on a vendor table, all different color styles, whatever heights, and people will, people buy them up quickly and it costed me nothing I have back here where I keep all my wood I have a big rubber made tote that I just throw all the chunks into once it starts getting full I start pulling stuff out and just looking at it like what can I do to get this into something that's going to turn around so I can go buy another board and uh, you know like I said in last week's video anything that you can do to increase 
your profit or cut down on overhead as a small wood shop such as myself, that's huge. I, I, I have to, every dime that I make goes back into the shop and I don't take any money from the house to, to put into the shop. Um, so I'm out here busting my butt because, you know, I want a new sander or I want a gripper or I want, you know, whatever. So anything that I can do out here that's going to use up every inch of board, every piece of scrap, everything, I, I do. I, I save every little tiny piece of wood because maybe I'll have a scroll saw project a year from now that needs a, just a little tiny piece and I can cut it out of that. So that's enough of me rambling on about that. So a lot of fun, guys. Like I said, it took me maybe an hour and a half to do. Um, and that's with the dry time on the die. It, it was dry in a few minutes, but I, I really enjoyed doing it. And I already had the wife out here, and she liked them, and she wants them for inside on a bookshelf. So, as always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by the shop. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here. And here is last week's video in case you missed it. So I'm Zach with Zia for Designs and uh, get to work.